Hey everyone. So I know I've had a super long break from making videos, but I am back today with what I know is a very big issue for a lot of people. And that is what happens to couples sex lives after they've been married for some time. And the kids have come along to change the entire story in that department. And I just think that's something that gets virtually no attention. Um, we talk a lot about, you know, sex lives re leading up to that point, but nobody really ever talks about the dramatic change that occurs after life hits and kids come and what's needed um, at that point. And I wanna hone in on husbands in particular or men for this video, because they're the ones in my opinion who have gotten so much bad guidance from the culture. It's not even guidance. It's just messaging about what women want. And, you know, they've been dealing with everything that's been happening over the past several decades with the changes with gender roles and all the rest. And I think they're very confused about what women want specifically after they start a life with them and have children with them. Um, so that's what we're going to talk about today. And I've had many coaching sessions with husbands who all pretty much say the same thing, which is something to the effect of, I can't win with my wife. I try everything to make her happy and nothing works. And that is why we're doing this video. I'm speaking pretty much specifically to that person. To address this, I wanna tell you about a book called The Dead Bedroom Fix. And it's by an author named Ralph who goes by the pen name DSO. And DSO stands for Dad Starting Over. He has a website with that exact name, dadstartingover.com. And his mission is really to help men become the best versions of themselves. And he, he I think he speaks to men who, for whom the bottom has kind of fallen out. We're going to hear from a man um, in just a bit. You'll see somebody to my left or right. I don't know which what you're seeing. I'm going to introduce him in a second. Um, and help them turn their lives around. And they have at dadstartingover.com a fraternity for men where they can come together and congregate and men can just be with other men and support and help each other in their lives. And the way, the reason why I got, um, why I was alerted to, to DSO is because he reached out to me a couple of years ago in an email essentially saying, hey, I just wanna touch base with you because your name keeps coming up in my fraternity groups. And I wanted to see who this chick was all about, you know, or what she was all about. And essentially the reason why that was is because I had written a book called The Alpha Female's Guide to Men and Marriage back in 2017. And the men in this group had heard about that book and I think wanted their wives to read it. It's essentially a book where I speak to wives about how to be women, how to be better wives um, and what it is that men need and that synergy between the sexes um, that is so necessary for a long lasting marriage. And so what was interesting is that Ralph or DSO was, you know, had basically written a book, this book that speaks directly to men about what they can do to turn things around and get the focus off of their wives. And I had written a book, the alpha females guide to men and marriage that says the exact same thing to women. Let's get the focus on you and your behaviors and what you're doing. Don't worry about him. You start changing the relationship will change. And Ralph was giving the exact same message to the other side, so to speak. Um, so that's how we got together. And in, in my wildest dream, every married, every married couple has a copy of the dead bedroom fix and the alpha females guide. And I'm convinced that if the wives had that and the husbands had that, seriously, relationships could be turned around big time. I, I do believe that. Unfortunately, Ralph could not be here today or couldn't be here for a couple months. And I really wanted to do this video. So instead I have Scott Gordon, who I'm gonna introduce who is um, part of the DSO fraternity group and he's a coach there. So he's just as good as the author in terms of um, get really delving into this issue. So let's introduce Scott. Hey, Scott. How are you? Good, how are done. you? I love it. Oh, it's great. Been looking forward to this. So excited to talk to you. Um, so I wanna, I wanna tell everybody that in the book or just Ralph's message in general, like I just said, is, is 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 speaking directly to men. And I'm going to quote what something he said in his introduction to his book. Quote, the good news is that you probably caused this. 
meaning the dead bedroom situation. So you can probably fix it. And I think there are two, you can correct me if I'm wrong. Excuse me. I think there are two ways that a person can look at that. They'll either be scared by that and say, hey, no, this is my wife. I want to talk about my wife and what she's doing wrong and what's causing me to react the way I am. And then there's the men who say, okay, so if I caused it, then that gives me the power to fix it, which is a much, much more empowering way to view it in my opinion. So I'd like to start, Scott, with just tell everybody your story. Oh boy. I know uh, it's kind to... of big. We're gonna <laughs> we'll try to condense I'll, I'll... it a little bit, but um yes. have at so, it. So yeah. So I am a professional. My wife is a professional as well. Um she is a type A butt kicker. Um she's beautiful and intelligent and I I'm not beautiful, but uh but we match pretty well. You're that beautiful, way. <laughs> yeah um i'm driven i've i grew up hard uh, grew up in the midwest uh, now live in the south my wife is from the south you know how you like that um so we met in school uh 20 years ago as a matter of fact almost exactly 20 years ago and i've been married uh coming up on 18 years and we started off pretty well i've always been an assertive guy um had my awkward moments in my high school years but uh, but now uh, when I became a professional, got a lot of self-confidence, and we met when I was in that mode, and she was very attracted to that. I was very attracted to her, and uh, we just hit it off immediately. Um, just an amazing love affair, um, and I had been through quite a few ladies uh, before that, and I got hurt a couple times, you know, just like everybody else, you get hurt, you get heartbroken, and sometimes it felt like everybody was out to get me and all this stuff. And so I became very detached emotionally and I had a lot of flings and didn't really care at that point. Um, and it got to the point where it became very empty. You know, it didn't really feel, feel right. Something was missing. Right. And I changed my mindset at that point. And then that's when I met my wife. Um, and I had a lot of experience with dating at that point. So I knew what I was looking for at that point. And I really, it's funny because it's just like, like everybody says, I, I met her when I wasn't looking. Right. Um, I really didn't care. I was just basically focusing on myself and boom, all of a sudden here she was and, and she just blew me away. Um, and it's, it was, it was great. So got married within about two and a half years. Went great. Everything was excellent. And here comes baby number one, um, in 2008. Okay. Um, my daughter was born. And so she, she didn't have a tough pregnancy, but, uh, but she, she had some medical problems due to the delivery. Just put it that way. She did not have a C-section, but she had some problems with that. And it got to the point where intimacy was lacking, uh, to say the least at that point. And that was my first taste of a dead bedroom, actually. Um, but it was, it was understandable, you know, mm -hmm. so I didn't really, didn't really it, it bothered me, but it was, uh, I was like, okay, you know, there's a reason time and, there was yeah, a concrete sure. reason you could point to. Yeah. Totally understood. And, but you know, three, four months down the road, I'm like, I'm still here, you know, and, uh, I'm, I'm a man and I have got needs and, uh, um, how they weren't being met. And at the time, you know, I didn't want to be a jerk. I didn't want to be a dick and I didn't want to have her, you know, I mean, so I had a little talk with her. Okay. Um, and that was the only time I ever brought it up that type of subject to her face. And I did it in a needy way. And you talk about turned off. Okay. My wife, it made it pretty, pretty rough. I mean, it basically made it, it shamed her. She got to the point where she just, I wouldn't say depressed, but she was just like, okay, you know, stay off me. Like she, she's dealing with vomit and diapers and all this stuff. And I'm here and I'm, I'm kind of whining. And uh, I was never really like that before that. So that went on and uh, the intimacy started coming back, you know, uh, after some time. And uh, we've always been pretty good that way. Uh, we've always had that spark and we've always had uh, a lot of, a lot of that chemistry. Um, but uh, the kids come around and things start changing mm -hmm. and that chemistry, it was still there, but it was just, it was, it got a little more mundane mm -hmm. um, and I got comfortable. Okay. I got a lot more comfortable. I started taking my wife for granted. And I started getting into some behavior where I was, it was like escapism. Okay. Mm -hmm. Video games, 
of, you know, um, I've, I was a race car driver for 20 years, you know, and so, so it was exciting that way for her, but it was also very time consuming. Yeah. Um, so um, when she would put the kids to bed, I basically just go to the shop and work on the car. Um, so we basically just separated um, and it created more distance between us two. Problem okay. number one, error number one coming in, but you yep. didn't see it at the time. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So, mm -hmm. so I, I forgot about the lover side of the equation and uh, I became a, a full on provider. Um, that's what we call, you know, the alpha beta thing that all that crap that everybody talks about. Um, we call it um, lover and provider. So I think that's a better terminology. I think for it's it. way better. I actually kind of I'm upset that I used the words alpha and beta back in those days. Now, seriously, because I think there there are better words. But anyway, go ahead. Yeah, there's it's too absolute. It's it just is. way too absolute. Okay, because um, I mean, I tried both. to talk about a spectrum in the whole. Well, I did talk about a spectrum, so I was clear. But eh, I just still don't like the words anymore. Yep. Go ahead. Yeah, and in my coaching, that's that's exactly my specialty is to to teach men to be both. Um, but we we lean a little bit more towards the lover side because you can never beat emotion. The the, the emotion is is king. Um, it really is. So, but anyway, so we got distant, um, started the fights, you know, um, we never, we fought before, but we would get over it quick. Um, but these fights lasted longer. So like they lingered more, um, three, four days, you know, it'd be tense, all the stuff. And then, um, here comes baby number two, baby number two, 2011, my son arrives. Okay. And that's, he, he did not nurse my daughter nursed and he nursed or he, we bottle fed him. Uh, so basically I took that role while she took care of my daughter because she was kind of needy at the time, very emotional, very anxious, very shy. Um, so my wife took care of her and I basically took my son to, to feed him and doing all this, this mundane things. And like I said, this, it's that kind of stuff. It's great for a father to do that, but you cannot forget about the lover side um, and just be the straight up provider because that's not exactly sexy. Right. I'm going to pause there just for a second and say it's interesting. Okay. The reason why I love this and why we're doing this is because it's very common to have heard women be told to keep themselves up throughout mm -hmm. their marriage, right? You know, don't get overweight. Don't always look nice yep. when he comes home from work. All this stuff is perfectly normal, but nobody ever talks about this other piece of it, which I think is just, I think this, in this way, we are equal personally yeah. in this oh, terms of sure. this topic. <laughs> for sure. The well, same, I should say mess. that. It's yeah. supposed to be messed, but yeah. Anyway, we'll, we'll okay. That's the good stuff. Okay, so um, so let's see, where was I? Uh, so baby number two comes around. It's not sexy, and let's see. I kind of lost my train of thought, but sorry, I won't um, interrupt you again. That's okay. Let's um, see. Um, so so she was um, you were you lost your lover side because you were uh, doing the bottle feeding. Yeah, okay, she was yeah, taking care yeah. of your daughter. So I was also doing household chores, you know, doing the chore play stuff, you know, absolutely, you know, look, mommy, what I did type of stuff that super unsexy, you know, that's not me normally, but what it was is just, it just, the, the routine just sets in, it mm -hmm. just sets in the mundane life sets mm -hmm. in, you know, that, that was, that was, that was year 10. And I'm going to tell you right now, I'm assuming in your coaching, you see the same thing I do year 10. That's that's mm -hmm. the time where I, I talk to guys. That's, that's when they come in the group. That's when they sometimes a few years before, but yeah, right around yeah. there. Eight to 10 years. That's, that's those are the guys that we typically see. So uh, that's when that, that comfort sets in and basically we lose the lover side completely. Um, and I forgot to date my wife. Uh, as a matter of fact, I got a story about that. Now, and there was one date night that we did. Uh, my daughter was fairly young and my son was an infant. Uh, got a, got a babysitter. She came over and we went to dinner. We had dinner. It was a great night. It was, it was a good dinner. And at the end of the dinner, we both looked at each other and we were silent for about 30 seconds. And I said this to my wife and I regret it and I'll never forget it. I told her we forgot how to date. That's exactly what I told my wife. We forgot how to date. And we, we just looked at each other and we're like, okay, let's just go home. I regret that moment. My wife remembers it very well. It was one of those turning points where I look back at it. And I realized how far I had gone and drifted from where oh, I was. Were. Yeah. And I wouldn't say I was lost at the time. I just forgot and I got comfortable and got, you get, you get set in those routines because it, mm -hmm. it's easy to do, you know, mm -hmm. you know, what's coming it's predictable. Um, and that's not sexy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um, so anyway, I retired from racing. Uh, my wife and I both own a practice. Uh, we're both doctors and we are business owners. We're entrepreneurs. 
and we we practice together and we're business partners and that's and an so, added element of yeah uh, oh totally different yeah most people won't right i don't there. think we'll relate to that but anyway it, it's hard it's hard yeah. you know um a lot of people ask us you know how do you do it well that well it works for us you know mm -hmm. we we, we divvy up the tasks i'm i'm a very good decision maker and she's really good with with menial and paperwork stuff that i can't stand so it works really well for us all right so here comes this uh we run into a very very large problem with our business and we had to make a decision because we outgrew the practice that, or the, the building that we were in and we had to make a decision whether to buy or build and we decided to build a new practice or build a new uh, facility and the we bought the practice from a previous owner and he owned that building and he made our life a living hell for about three years. Okay. Um, he, he went back at the lease and really tried to destroy us financially. Okay. And that's the kind of people sometimes you deal with in business. That's just the way it is. And I had trouble coping with that. I had a lot of trouble coping with that. And I'm a very independent man. I was raised by a Marine. You deal with stuff and I isolated myself even more. Okay. Got to the point where I, I played video games. I didn't want anybody bothering me at home. Uh, stay at, stay at work longer, all that stuff. I mean, we just, we, we, we definitely grew some distance between us two and it blew up one night when I just couldn't take it anymore. And uh, the suicidal thoughts started creeping in. I started having suicidal ide ideation and for about a month, it was pretty bad. And I told my wife, I was like, this is, this is coming through my head. Um, at the time I was about, I was 41 and just that, that really critical time for a man, 40 to 45, if you didn't know this, it's the number one, the number one, I didn't know that. Uh, ca number one cause of death is, su is suicide. Oh, no, I knew that, but, uh, but I didn't yeah. know the age group. Yeah. Yeah. So 40 to 45 um, yeah. is the number one cause of death for men. Um, and you don't hear that statistic in the, no. in the freaking media, do you? Mm -hmm. um, but it's true. Um, but that's that critical time where everything just, it, you get. Is it like your head. life has either come together or it hasn't at that moment? Yeah. Is that how, yeah. You, probably lost yourself. You lost your mission. You don't really mm -hmm. know your purpose. You don't really have any, you lost your ambition, lost your drive. All that stuff happens about that age group. So, and that happened to me. And I took what happened to us with our business personally. And normally I don't do that kind of stuff. I usually left uh, my, my, my saying in, in our, uh, in that starting over is uh, I'm made a tap on a titanium, titanium where nothing sticks to me and nothing can break me. Okay. Um, but at the time, everything was sticking to me everything was sticking to me and I had a heck of a time with it, coping with it. And ladies, if you're listening to me, if you've got a man that's in that situation, understand one thing, men don't have, they, they don't have tribes anymore. Okay. Mm -hmm. They don't, they don't get together anymore. You know, everybody's busy. You're going a thousand miles an hour to soccer practice, football practice, the track practice, all this, all this stuff's going on. Guess what happens? Men get distant and they're not talking to each other. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, there's a, a TikTok that's really, it is huge. Um, there's a TikTok that actually is really, really popular right now, making the rounds where there's a woman where she, she asks, uh, you know, so who do you call if you're having troubles? And then they, it, it, it goes to, uh, to the guys. Have you seen this? Keep it's going, huge. maybe. Okay. Um, so these guys were talking, you know, they'll, because it sounds like she's talking to women, right? You know, oh, I'm going yeah. to call my best yeah. friend. I'm going to call my sister. I'm going to call this, but it, it actually goes over to men and they say, no one, no one, there's no one's going to no, listen to me. That. Yep. I don't have anybody I can talk to. Mm -hmm. If I do talk to somebody, it's going to, they feel like it's going to be used against them. You're supposed to deal with stuff. You don't cry in front of people, all of this stuff. So we, we internalize everything. Um, and, and I'd like to interrupt have... there really quickly again and say, mm -hmm. you'll hear a lot in the culture that that's because of their masculinity and that they don't know how to talk to people. But in fact, we got rid of male spaces because there was Bingo. a time when they did that for for eons until several decades ago when it was allowed to go and hang out with your guys at the bar or to poker or whatever for hours and the men and the women understood yep. that that's what that was and let it happen so yep. it's not because their inherent masculinity doesn't allow them to speak but anyway go ahead it's, it's just we're not connected you know we're just not connected and you know the, the lions clubs and the, the masons and all these huge organizations have been in staples for you know centuries in the united states they're disappearing Mm -hmm. Um, so we just, we just don't have a, a good, um, network of guys and that's what happened to me. I didn't have really good outlets people. I felt like if I did talk to somebody, what are they going to say? You know, like, so I was, I was really isolated and really 
really, really lost. And I had a night where I was basically driving around looking for overpasses to drive off or drive into uh, for two hours. And my wife had no idea. Um, I came home. She was bitter because I'd left. Uh, we had a huge fight that night. And, uh, and she was of the mind of like, okay, well, he can leave, you know, and I've got to deal with the kids still. Um, so she had that resentment in her head at the time because we were fighting a lot. And I started packing my stuff. Um, I'm like, if you don't really care, I'm out. And that was the night that we turned our stuff around. Um, that was it. So I started half, I, I had my suitcase hat or suitcase half packed. And um, I finally snapped out of the fog when she was completely freaking out. Um, she's like, you would actually, actually leave me and the kids. You would leave everything. Um, and, uh, and I said, yes, I did. I did at that time. And she completely broke down. She had no idea how bad it was. And I told her what I'd been doing for the past two hours. And I was like, babe, I, I got a problem. Okay. Um, I can't snap out of this. And I, I, need, I need your help here. Okay. Um, you can't, you, you got to stop trying to break me down, uh, you know, and, and it was very difficult. Um, and, uh, that happened. It was very difficult for me, but we snapped out of it. Um, and I knew at the time, my biggest problem was I was overworking myself. Um, I've been very successful in my life and I was really, really pushing myself to the extreme. And I've been doing that for about six months, something to that point. And I realized that, that was one of the main issues that I had is because I was completely fatigued. Mm -hmm. I stopped taking care of myself. I gained some weight. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I lost my self-care regimen, you know, all that stuff, you know, went away and I damn near killed myself because of it. And so snapped out of it. And I'm, I'm very thankful that uh, I own my practice. I can dictate my own schedule. And that's what I did the next day immediately. Boom. Just like that. I went from seeing 35 patients a day to back to my normal, like 22, 24 patients a day. And uh, it made a huge difference for me. And I feel for men out there that, that don't have that ability to do that because ladies, if you've got a man like that, that's stuck, he's in big trouble. Okay. Um, because he, he doesn't have a way out of it. Um, and, uh, he needs help. Okay. I did it on my own. Some guys are going to need some help. They're going to need some therapy. They're going to need some people to talk to. Okay. Um, otherwise you may lose him. Okay. Um, and that's going to be, that's, that's a truth bomb for you. Okay. I had that ability to do it. I did it. Things were great. And then long story short, COVID starts coming in 2020 hits and I got addicted to comfort food at the time. Um, fast food, best, basically every day, ice cream is one of my weaknesses. Oh boy, I'm addicted to that stuff. Um, and I have to fight that. And I put on 15 pounds within three or four months. Got, that was definitely the unhealthiest I've ever been. And here comes September 15th, 2020. That was the day that will, I'll never forget. I woke up that morning. It was the day after my, my daughter's birthday. And I woke up and I looked in the mirror and I, and I, I was like, okay, I don't feel good. I don't look good. Where did that guy go where I could light up a room and everybody's laughing and cutting up and, and being that, that energy that, uh, that, that, I, that I can provide for people. Now, where's that guy? I don't see that guy right now. And boom, I got struck by lightning. I got struck by lightning. That's the best way that I can describe that feeling. And I changed. I changed everything I could. I, I, I basically thought of everything negative in my life. I thought I was like, okay, boom, it's gone. Uh, the video games, uh, um, I had a problem with porn, uh, which is a major issue, major issue for men nowadays mm -hmm. because of it's smartphones. Huge. It's re it's ridiculously, it's, huge. it's Everywhere. I keep wanting okay. to cover that and I haven't yet. And it's, it's, uh, yep. it has to be done. It's huge. Yep. I limited it, everything, uh, uh, the fast food. Uh, I got serious about my diet, um, and everything I could think of that was negative. And, uh, I was addicted to the news at the time. Like, uh, anyway, it was just garbage. Um, so that day from that moment on, I've been different. I, I went back to where I was. I was back to my assertive ways and uh, not the, the passive ways where, you know, she can handle the stuff and I'm going to do my thing. Right. And within two weeks, my wife was freaking out, completely freaking out. She's like, what is going on? I had a thousand, <laughs> I had a thousand volts of energy constantly. Um, and I was working out. I went um, from not working out at all to working out six days a week. Um, really serious about my diet, you know, all that garbage. 
And man, did I feel amazing. After two months, or excuse me, two weeks, it was incredible. I, I felt amazing. So my wife uh, <laughs> at the time, she was in tears. I mean, she basically thought I was basically having an affair. That's, that's, yeah. that's, that was on her mind because she's like, what is this? What is going on? You're scaring me. And we had this huge talk. How come you didn't just hours. tell her, Hey, I'm, I'm, everything changes starting today. Just so she knew. What I, like, yeah. What I, what I did is I told her, um, I, I had an awakening is what I said. I had an awakening and I want to be a better man. And I said that a lot. Okay. I want to be a better man. I want to be a better man. And that's, and, but she was like, I need more. <laughs> I need more than that. More information. And uh, yeah, yeah, for sure. And I was just like, that's it, babe. I'm, that's where I'm at. And uh, so at the time, this is where the dead bedroom fix comes in. Okay. That same day that I had that awakening, uh, I was looking on my Facebook and this ad comes up on Facebook. Mm -hmm. And I, I saw the picture of the, of the cover. Now, if you can show the cover. Yeah. Again, show the cover um, again. It's, yeah, it's that picture right there is, it's for a man. That is very triggering. <laughs> okay. Um, you've got a wife that's totally aloof. She's on her phone. And you've got this guy that's crossing his arms, looking at her uh, with like, what the hell? What the hell? I'm still here. I'm a man. Right. And, you know, this is a problem. And uh, like, with us, we never, our bedroom never died. Uh, we were still pretty intimate at the time, but it just was no passion. The passion wasn't there. And I knew it. I was bothered by it. She was bothered by it. And I was like, wow, okay, that, this looks cool. You know, I'm, I'm stopping to listen to the news. I'm stopping to listen to this. So I might as well listen to some, some self-help books, right? And that's exactly what that book is. It's a, it's a male self-help book. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the title is, uh, you know, Ralph, that's starting over. He's a, he's a marketing guy, okay? It's a very sexy title. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so it he is. wanted to sell books mm -hmm. and that's what he did. And what it is, ladies, if you ever see this book <laughs> in a man's hand, it's a male self-help book. It's what it is. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's exactly sure. what it is. So, yep. Just like the alpha guy. It's just the alpha females guy. It's, it's for the, yeah, it's for the, it's the same mm -hmm. thing. It's the same thing. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna listen to this thing. Uh, you know, to and from, if I'm at the gym or if I'm, I'm driving and oh my God, when I started listening to it, it was like, ding, 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 ding. I had all these epiphanies. I was like, holy crap, this guy, like, he's like, everybody jokes in the group that's, uh, you know, DSO's like, you know, he must have a camera in my house because this is exactly mm -hmm. what's going on. Mm -hmm. um, there's five mistakes that he lists in there that men make. I won't go into it. We're going to talk about them. Very, we're gonna, when we finish yeah, up okay. your story, we're going to get to that. Yeah. Yep. So basically it's really, really manipulative behavior for men because they get frustrated um, sexually. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, and so they just don't know how to fix it mm -hmm. for me. I did because I've, I've always been independent. I had experience with ladies. I, I realized I was like, I wasn't dating my wife. I wasn't actually seducing her. I wasn't wooing her anymore. And that's what I started doing. Okay. I started getting healthy. I started working on my mindset and I was like, okay, I focused completely on myself. I didn't worry about what was going on around me. I didn't worry about the kids. I didn't worry about her. It was me. And everything changed. Everything changed. I was back to the old me that, you know, that when we met, when all those sparks were flying, I was that guy again. Okay. And guess what my wife said? Guess what my wife said? I got my husband back. I got my husband back. That's what she said. And that's the truth. It was awesome. Um, and that's just catnip for a man. Okay. When you hear that kind of stuff from your woman, um, it's, it builds you up. Okay. Um, and ladies, trust me, if, if you build your man up, your marriage will change. It will change. Okay. Um, because if you, if you, if you nitpick him and if you're really hard on him all the time, and you know, I know you're frustrated when he's not doing things around the house. If you, if you break him down, you're going to emasculate him and it's going to make it worse. Okay. Um, so, so she that's built the, me up. Okay. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. She built me up. She built me up and she, and she embraced it. And man, after that two weeks, uh, we had that huge conversation. It was two hours long. Our marriage has never been the same since. I mean, we, oh my goodness, like that, that magic came back, you know? Um, and it's, it's, it's a beautiful thing. So before we get to the, the common mistakes men make, um, mm -hmm. spe especially after they're married and the kids come, because I really, truly think that's when it happens because one of the things I always do with, with couples or individually, I don't talk to them so much together, but 
is ask them to think back when they first met their person, when those sparks were mm-hmm. flying. So there's, there's basically, it's like you have two relationships. You have the pre-kid relationship and the post-kid, <laughs> right? And they don't look mm-hmm. anything alike in terms of your daily life and how that changes the dynamic. But if you immediately go back to what happened to cause the spark and repeat that, assuming not too much damage has been done because there are those circumstances which we can talk about but you can get it back immediately if it was there to begin with now if it was never there to begin with that's another conversation too but if it was those same behaviors will elicit that same result so it's 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 what's nice about mentioning that to people is they immediately go oh yeah i remember and they know what they were doing they were getting up every day they were looking in the mirror looking what they looked like putting their clothes on a certain way staying fit um uh, um making overtures uh uh being proactive right not reactive mm-hmm. we're going to talk about that so it's at everybody's it's at most people's fingertips if they just pay attention or if it's brought to brought to their mind. Mm-hmm. So let's talk sure. about some of those common mistakes that, that the DSO talks about in the book, the dead bedroom fix um, that is so common. I think once men move into that provider role and are not, and are think, I truly believe they think that that's supposed to be enough because the culture is steering them men now into that space. Um, women aren't like the way they were in your mother's day. They want you to do this and this and this and this. They're equal. You're going to share everything. But all this messaging that is dismantling the natural yin and yang of a man and a woman and what makes it spark. And they're doing it because they truly believe that's what they what's what women want because that's what they've been told. So I want everybody to hear clearly that when I talk about all these ways that people can change and be better, it's not, you have to be able to hear it without hearing blame, even though it is blame, but it's blame by saying it's really not your fault because you've been conditioned and acculturated into these ways. And you're bringing a lot of stuff from childhood as well. So it's not like you're knowingly or purposely doing anything. It's just that, Hey, don't worry about how you got here. There is a way out. And this is what it is. So let's start with that. So what are some of those common mistakes common mistakes uh give, i have them listed here intent. if you want me okay, okay. Yeah, number one sure. give i'll, I'll list them one. and you explain them how about that got gift, it gift giving yep so uh you made a mistake you put your foot in your mouth uh which happens a lot for men uh when it comes to ladies because we're we're logical thinkers we're not emotional beings uh and ladies have a tendency to take things the wrong way Okay. Um, so you start a fight, you go to the grocery store, you get you, get you some flowers. Okay. And you bring them home to your woman and lo and behold, here you go and you expect sex. That's what that is. That's exactly what that is. You have, you have expectations. Um, you give to get, that's a huge problem for, for a lot of guys that we talk to. Um, and, uh, we have been programmed for that. You know, I mean, you see it in the, <laughs> in, you know, the, the media and the TV mm-hmm. and all this stuff, but like, you know, Oh, you know, I'm, you know, I'm sorry, sweetheart. You know, here's your yeah. flowers. Like, right. Kowtowing now, to, or being conciliatory yep. or being, um, yep. just saying you're sorry, or be, it's totally opposite of what's yep. sexy, but they've been told this is what makes the this woman happy. And, and let me pause here for a moment and say, here's where I think the real struggle is for men. And you can correct me if I'm wrong. Mm. This is what I've seen. There is a push and pull for a husband between um, what what they're, if they don't know now, what they will learn is um, the way to a woman's heart, sexually speaking, and wanting to make her happy. So it is true that men want to make their woman happy. So they they think well i need to do the things that will make her happy but those very things are pushing her away because it's not providing the sexual um charge how does a man rectify those two things i think that's where they're uh, struggling and again maybe right. i'm wrong but that's okay. what i see it's the truth uh now that's complicated because you have to um, reestablish that spark right you have to you have to do it a certain way okay so you know we're just talking about the mistakes not really how to how to remedy it. Okay. 
Um, but what it is, is, uh, you know, it's everything. So like it's being the provider essentially. So you, you're, you're giving your, your, your family a good life. You know, you're providing all of this stuff. Where's my sex. That's, that's, that's the mentality that, uh, that a lot of guys have and they, they get very frustrated with that. And that is definitely the wrong mindset because you need, you want to, you want to provide because that's what we do. Okay. We go to work, we go slay saber tooth tigers, we bring them home and we cook them. Okay. That's, that's what we're programmed to do. That's what guys are programmed to do. We're made to go out, get stuff, bring it back. Okay. Um, but if you're only doing that, that's the problem. Okay. Um, so when you expect your expectations, that's, that's the issue. When, when you're, you're giving, you're giving to get. And do you think a lot, do you think it's fair to say a lot of men would say that's not what they're doing, but they are doing it. Like they don't, they're not in touch with the fact that they're doing it. Yeah. Okay. So here we go. I'm going to throw this out here. Um, most of the guys that I talk to, most of the guys I coach, and I'm sure you probably see this too, is they, they're lacking emotional intelligence Mm -hmm. okay they just they just they're they're very logical um no offense to engineers out there but that's i see a lot of that Mm -hmm. kind of stuff okay they're Mm -hmm. very logical they're fixers Mm -hmm. you know one plus one equals two but they don't realize that there's a lot of gray area there too um it's how you it's how you present it okay um if you do all of that stuff and forget about having the dance in the kitchen turn the lights down and have the candlelight dinner that's the kind of stuff. That's that's the difference. Okay, you slay your saber tooth tiger, you bring it home, you turn the lights down, you you dance with your woman a little bit while while the saber tooth tigers um while it's cooking. That's a good analogy. And then you have it. And again, that might be something that would have occurred during the dating. Excuse me, during the dating stage. For sure. And For th- sure. that's what I mean by that's why this this topic is so important to me because I'm so concerned with what happens after I do. I'm not really as concerned with the before because I think the before part is the easy part. Um, mm-hmm. But you naturally do those things because there's no kids around. The responsibilities haven't hit. So you naturally are going to turn down the lights, put on the candles, do a massage, have a dance in the to the slow music or whatever. That yeah. stuff, when does that happen after kids come? And to be fair to people who are still in the throes of it. So I think you know this, everybody kind of knows this now. I'm an empty nester. So everything has changed in that regard for me. I, we can do that easily. But for years, who even thinks to do that? You know, And even if you could do it, there's kids around. So you have to orchestrate it when they're in bed. Well, okay, that works when they're young. But then what happens when they become teenagers all bets are off because, and then it's like having a roommate. It's not like you can do the same things you could do when they were three. So what do you say to that? Uh, that's actually the stage we're at right now. Um, and it's interesting because uh, I had this conversation with my kids this morning um, where I asked them, I was like, you know, so do you think mommy and dad are happy? And uh, they're like, yes, absolutely. Um, Cause last night what I did, I, I did exactly what I was describing. Um, uh, long day, busy day, as always. And all I did, we have these little Halloween LED candles. <laughs> okay. All I did was turn the lights down. My wife, had, she'd cook, um, cooked, you know, we had these little pre-made meals that she basically microwaved. She'll, she'll laugh at that. Um, and put them down on the counter. And all I did was turn the lights down and I grabbed those candles and I put them right next to us. And I just started playing a little bit of light music behind it. Kids are in the background. Okay. They're doing their own thing. Um, but it's just me and her. And she just, she just, she just lights up when I do that kind of stuff. I mean, it's just, it's awesome. I want to say to husbands out there, I cannot convey how, I cannot convey strongly enough the significant, the power, that's the word I want, the power of um, being the rock for your woman. Bingo that can handle, that can see the situation and contain her, uh, tame her, maybe is a better word, which is, that's what I see that, what you just described. Um, I'm so fortunate because I have a man who can do that and I can just surrender so easily. Um, He's Mm -hmm. a big guy and he just, and he can see it and um, he can stop my anxiety like that. Perfect. And and and, and I, men I'm, don't I'm realize there's a lot of men who don't understand that that's not something they're 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 programmed to think that's harming a woman or you shouldn't just the thought of taming her is so you know awful. Yeah. It's it's the complete opposite. And until you learn it and experience it, you really don't know what I'm talking about. Fair. Very fair. Um, okay, 
So we, I'm t we could talk for hours. Okay. So my wife is very, she's, she's anxious. Okay. Uh, her gerbil in her wheels constantly going all the time, constantly. And, and honestly, a lot of times it will go to the worst case scenario. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. She needs me. She needs me to calm mm -hmm. her down. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's my job. That's my job. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I wasn't doing it for years. I was not doing that job for years. And so she got wrapped up in that a gerbil wheel and she was turned off completely. Like, mm -hmm. you know, sex off her radar. It didn't because if you're struggling, mind. sorry, I, I don't yeah. want to forget what I'm thinking. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Uh, uh, well, what it is, is well, go ahead. <laughs> sorry. I was going to say, um, cause when you're struggling, you can't be that rock. And then she's just more out of her. And this goes back to like the Jordan Peterson's, I think order and chaos thing, right? Your yeah. order were chaos. And of course people freaked out at that. Um, analogy or whatever and, but it's, it's that's, perfect that's why men need a tribe that's exactly why they need to try because when i was messed up mentally i didn't have those guys that i could go to so what happened was i did it to my wife um and guess what she did not like that because she starts freaking out yes like, and she can't bring herself down yes okay she can't and she's constantly on you know a thousand miles an hour yeah and, you yep. know, ten ten thousand feet off the air and think about she's the number lost. of women who are like that that's not unusual i yep. mean like today it's not yep. and on my on mother's day that was unusual but that's yep. the average woman today it is um because the guys have a ten, we call it emotional vomiting okay there's a difference between uh, uh having a, a productive conversation and vomiting all over your wife okay um the analogy we use often in this kind of thing is uh you, you just lost your job Okay. Just lost your job as a man. You come home. There's two different, two different ways you can approach that. Okay. One, oh my God, what am I going to do? Uh, we might have to move. Um, you know, we might have to get the kids out of private school. Oh my goodness. I, I, I'm not sure what I'm going to do. Okay. That's one way to do it. Okay. Not sexy. That's not sexy. Okay. That's going to freak your woman out completely. And she is going to be completely gone. Number two, you come home, say, babe, good news, bad news. Okay. Bad news. I just lost my job. Okay. Good news is it's okay. John down the road, he needs some help. You know, he's got a roofing company. He's short of help. I'm going to help him out while I get my, get my, my feet on the ground again. We're going to be just fine, babe. We're going to be just fine. That's sexy. Mm -hmm. That is sexy. That will calm your woman down. That will absolutely be the rock. That's, that's, and that's this what is I teach. all about understanding the significance of a woman's need for safety. And Bingo. we're not just talking about physical or even financial safety, but, but emotional safety. Yep. And again, where the hell are men ever going to hear this stuff? Where? They don't, where? they don't, you know, okay. So the media, okay. Um, you know, we're both the same generation. So yep. I'm almost 45 years old. Okay. I kind of trace it back. It's funny because of, um, you know, back in the day when we only had like four or five channels, right? So everybody was kind of watching the same stuff. Um, you remember the, and you the had to get up to group? change it. Yeah. Yeah. You had to get yeah. up to go to the TV mm -hmm. and no DVR. You, if mm -hmm. you missed it, you missed it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so um, home improvement. You remember that show? Mm -hmm. Great show. I think great show. Tim Allen, mm -hmm. kind of an idiot, right? He was yep. an idiot, aloof, mm -hmm. um, made mistakes all the time. Guess what? The, the wife was the one that actually um, calmed him down and, uh, and was the rock. Oh, I know, didn't remember he, that. He, okay. I didn't yeah, watch it very much. Was, okay. That's exactly what, what Interesting. Apple was. So she, she, she was the one that was calming him down. That's, kind of where I've, I can kind of trace it back to where this is happening. Cause a lot of guys like that stuff rubs off. Okay. Yeah. Um, Homer Simpson. Oh, you know, mm -hmm. that's, that, yeah. that's the analogy I use mm -hmm. for guys, Homer Simpson. I mean, this stuff is ingrained in you as a child and you've realized that, uh, that, you know, the guy's supposed to be kind of an idiot. He's supposed to be funny, you know, um, and mom's supposed to be the, uh, the rational one. That's and where if you this didn't is have from, an I ad think add to that cultural conditioning mm -hmm. you didn't have the model at home to show you something different then you're really yeah. screwed it's, i mean and it's your product of divorce now. or if your parents yeah. relationship is, is you know unhealthy or whatever forget it it's way worse now and, you know think of this when's the last time that a uh, new superhero that was a man was uh, introduced yeah no we had a superwoman didn't we this past year super yeah. not superwoman like wonder woman but like i don't know didn't we just have something and yeah in the movies that was trying to replace the man anyway yeah it it's, sounds corny it sounds corny right but it's true it's true okay? it's very true it it's 
you know, um, boys growing up need to wear that Spider-Man costume. They need to wear that Captain America. Mm -hmm. Like that stuff is, yeah, it's a big deal. Um, You know, call me traditional, call me whatever. It's, It's, that's a big deal for, for a boy. It's moving. I call it moving. I call it moving with the biological tide instead of against it. Bingo. I don't call it. I hate the word traditional for that because people are like, what does it mean? What does that mean exactly? Just, yep. You can modify roles for the mm-hmm. current times. Mm-hmm. You, there's leeway there if you stay within the tr- general structure of how we're made. That's it, you know. And yep. instead of this being all, you know, it's extreme in one direction or another, that's not necessary. Just always stay with the natural way that you've been made, and then tweak it to whatever your personality is. Oh, let's go back to the mistakes. I want to make sure everybody's real clear on these. Um, because okay. I think this will be very helpful to them. Number two, doing more chores. You kind of already chore alluded play. to that, but you call it the, or he chore calls play. it the chore play. Play, chore, chore play. play. Yes. Yeah. Uh, a lot of, a lot of folks know that, that term it's, it's thrown out a lot. Basically what it is, is guys doing stuff around the house with expectations. Okay. Again, it's all about expectations. You do, uh, you fold the laundry, you do the dishes, uh, you vacuum the, the house, uh, you, you do your, your tasks around the house because in the logic in a guy's head is like, okay, she's distracted. She's not really thinking about sex. If I take some of the stuff off her plate, that, yes. she'll be more yes. into it. Okay. And that's important and, to hear because it's not necessarily, yep. ooh, you know, like I'm, I'm going to get laid if I do this. It's, it's yep. more complicated than that. You're right. It's like trying mm-hmm. to make her get more relaxed you're by taking that it off for of her a good plate. reason. Yeah. Yeah, you're doing yeah. it for a good reason, but you're doing it for a bad reason too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's it's manipulative behavior. And where guys really make a mistake, they go, Hey, mommy, check this out. You know, um, I just I just folded the towels, you know, and uh, hey, look, I just loaded the dishwasher because I know that's one of your pet peeves. It's your your husband uh, um, will load the He'll dishwasher. He'll load it and then he doesn't. Turn it on. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Right. I love talking so, to you because you can see how much you've read of my stuff. I love it. You yeah, have all these details. Sure. Love your stuff. Okay. Um, but uh, but that's the truth. So guys do that expecting so they give to get mm-hmm. not not sexy which is That's what you said sexy. before about the the gift yep. giving so it's like another form yep. of that okay let me, let uh, me just tell you real quick sorry. i just want to mm-hmm. i just want to say um how you remedy that is you just you just grown people just do that stuff it's it's just part of what you do okay you do it if it's there if you see a pile of towels on the dining room, dining room table you fold them you do it you walk on you don't just like working That's it earning or yep. whatever you just do it because yep. that's that's what you just do in do life because yep bingo three happy wife happy life oh okay happy wife happy life that's gonna that's the one that's probably gonna make some women a little angry okay um, because that is a problem okay if you're doing things to please your woman and not for yourself you lose yourself okay that's 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 what they're talking about here so like you you lose your independence that way okay um, you like I said, you're you're giving to get again. All right, um, you want to make her, you want to make her happy. But the problem is that when you when you she can see right through it. Okay, that's mm-hmm. that's the thing. You know, women can see right through what your intentions are, um, and the happy wife, happy life moniker. It just it just it's it's emasculating. Okay, so is the Men message have- to not make not even try to make women happy anymore, or to have a different definition of that for a man no, who feels that so strongly? It's different because what it is, um, so let me put it this way, okay? Embracing conflict, okay? You have to brace, embrace the conflict mm-hmm. in, a, in a relationship, mm-hmm. okay? So if, you, if you're doing stuff around the house and you're trying to, trying to keep her calm, um, you know, and keep her down, that doesn't work, okay? If something's bothering you as a man, you need to tell her, yep. okay? And, you, and there's a good way to do that and there's a bad way to do that, mm-hmm. okay? Emotional vomiting, that's bad. Okay. But when you, when you say to your woman, um, you know what, I'm not a real big fan of, of, um, of, of, uh, I was going to give you an example of my wife, but I, I'm not going to, okay. um, but, uh, but basically, um, here's what I like, here's what funny. I don't. Okay. That's what yeah. you mean. Okay. So here's a good example. Okay. When I had my awakening, um, after the two weeks, there was a, there was a boundary that I put down boundaries is, is a huge, huge buzzword. Okay. Mm-hmm. Right now. The boundary that I set for my for my wife and I, I was talking about before when we separated ourselves at night. Okay, kids go to bed, we separated, we did our own thing, and then we meet we meet in the middle at, when we go to bed. But you're not you're not 
if you haven't connected to getting before you get in the bed it's not yeah yep and she's not turned on at Mm -hmm. all okay Mm -mm. you know us for men it doesn't take much no (laughs) it doesn't take much for women absolutely it does um and if you do the dating thing yep undivided attention that's my big thing yep so i knew that and then what i did is i said hey babe we put down we could put the kids to bed you need to put your work down and I'm going to put my video games down and we're going to be, and we're going to talk and we're going to dance and we're going to have a good time. Nine 30 rolls around. It's us time. Okay. We need this. That's what I did. That's the boundary that I put down on my wife and Holy cow. Did it change my marriage? Okay. <laughs> it changed everything. We still do that two years, two years in. I mean, we still do that. We still talk, you know, we just kind of just connect just I'm present. I'm there. I'm, I'm there for well, her. And again, I know I keep coming back to this, but go back to how you got her in the first place. You didn't yeah. do it by not connecting. You were yeah. connecting constantly during that time period. Yeah. That's what made yeah. it work. And no, you can't mm-hmm. connect necessarily every day or in that intense yeah. way. You can't after the kids in the life. You can't. Yeah. But if you lose it entirely, then that's when it goes south. So you have to figure out that happy medium. Yeah. Be scarce. Do your thing. Do your mission. But when you're there, you're there. Yeah. You're present for her. That's which that's this is a big deep. thing today because of social media and because it of is. internet and because of, I mean it this is worse than it ever was. So my big oh, thing, yeah. just a little like I won't say I don't talk too much about my marriage on camera, but I will say this and he'll just kind of laugh. So we um we love we don't watch current day TV. Like I love the Waltons. Okay, I watch the Waltons <laughs> every day. I'm still into sure. that. Um one of the reasons why I do. Um is because, no, not because I'm living in the past, but because it there are things there that can remind you that you can still incorporate those things if they work and they're timeless, even though we live in this crazy world. So for example, at the end of the day, because there was no TV or internet or phone or anything else, you literally had to sit down in a space with nothing but the two of you just sitting there. And you'll see them like just hanging out on each other, talking or knitting or maybe the radio's on in the background. That would be the most um, noise you'd have. And that kind of daily routine naturally fosters conversations that would otherwise not occur that can only bring you closer together, even if they start out as disagreements and you work them through or whatever. Watching that every day reminds me, okay, I want that. And we don't live in a world that naturally fosters that. So I go out of my way and i I've been the leader in this regard with my husband. He'll he'll admit that, but he I, I brought him to my side. Thank God that I want to foster that in this world, and so we we do exactly what you just said because of that. So anyway, yes. that's just an idea for people, and I know people will be like, yeah. I can't do that every day. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. Like, okay, you say that, and you're like, well, you know, you're just wasting. Yeah, I mean, time. you're you, you you're kicking the can down the road because eventually it's going to blow up if you're never connecting. Bingo. Anyway. Make time, make time for make each time. other. Um, and like the I last said, one be was independent. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, oh, yeah. Be independent. Do your own things. Yeah. You know, but then but you, come together. Then you, then you meet. And, mm-hmm. Yep. There's important. just not a lot you know, of coming put your together. Phones down. Yep. Yeah. I hear that all the time, man. And Ladies I feel for people. Their guys get really frustrated. And I feel for people. I mean, it's not like we're any different from that. We learned it hard the hard way too. I feel for all of us because we are bombarded with ever since the internet came into existence with this stuff. So it's, it's, it can, you, you can get, you can have two attitudes about it. You're like, God damn it. Like, this is so frustrating that I have to force this. Whereas back in the Walton's days, it just happened naturally. They didn't have to force anything. It just came to them. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But whatever, that's where we are. You have to. So it's an extra step, but a well uh, not a worth well, uh, well worth it more than yep. worth it. That worth doesn't it. even. Yep. Uh, worth yeah. it. Oh my goodness. Yep. Um, and then the last one is talk doesn't work. What does that mean? Oh, the talk. You... Okay. Yeah. So it's the, the talk, we call it the talk. Okay. Oh, so... Having the talk. Is that what you mean the about talk. the relationship? Or something? Okay. Yeah. I had already mentioned it in my story. Okay. I did it one time in my, oh, in my yes. marriage. Yeah. I see. It totally right. turned my wife off. Okay. So the talk, is, hey, babe, um, I need more sex. Why am I not getting more sex? Oh. Why are you not attracted to me anymore? Uh, that's the unhealthy talk, okay? Um, that so just is, act, no talking, just do it. Yep. To do what you need to you do. You cannot, yep, I'm gonna quote some red pill stuff here, okay? Okay. You cannot negotiate desire, 
you can it cannot be done okay you cannot negotiate yourself into a woman's pants it it doesn't work that way no. okay um and that's the talk okay and man is that common that is a very very common thing for a lot of guys what does that look and like what's that conversation very, look like oh uh, that like to I negotiate said, you know okay yeah. oh, ju- oh sorry so, just saying i need more sex because you're not giving me bingo. enough. basically yeah, yeah so the, the the cover of the book okay your woman is is turned over she's got her back to you um and for people really who are coming in late the- there it is yep. again sorry go ahead that's right so what happens is when you're seeing that guy he's very frustrated eventually and he's not embracing the conflict right He's not, he's not putting no, down, he's you know, avoiding hey, um, the conflict. That's a huge one. We need to talk about avoiding conflict. Huge. Go ahead. Okay. Oh, it's huge. Um, so what happens is he wells it in, wells it in, wells it in, and eventually it blows up. Okay. And he just, he just vomits all over her. Okay. Saying, I, I need sex. I need this. I I love, blah, 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 blah. Like need. Mm-hmm. That's not good. Okay. When you say you need something from your woman, that's, you know, you're, you're taking away her choice. Okay. You're taking away her desire to do that. To do okay? that. Um, and again, going back the to the problem. dating phase or the early stage, did you do that then? No, no, no. <laughs> no you wooed her. And you then wooed when her. the moment was right, mm-hmm. you, when the moment was right, mm-hmm. you initiated and it was amazing, right? That's what I'm talking about. So, yeah. And again, I want everyone to hear that we are all those of us with children. And I do want to separate those from people without children, because I do think they're just, they're two different conversations completely. We all are susceptible to the reality of life hitting and kids hitting all of us. No one's exempt from it. And we've all experienced some semblance of this. Mm -hmm. There's just no way not to. So the purpose of this is to say, Hey, that's normal. And here's a way out or a way back. Maybe is a better way of putting it. Um, Can I tell I want to tell a story real quick. Yeah. And I'll tell the, the shift in the mindset in a man. Okay. This, I know when it happened for me. I, I know the exact moment what happened when I when I changed from a from a dude to a dad. Okay. Oh, that's a um, good phrase. From a dude to yep. a dad. This yeah. is what I, this is when it happened. Okay. Um, we were it was the first ultrasound appointment with my daughter. Okay. We already knew we were pregnant. You know, uh, we had pretty good luck that way. We knew we were pregnant, uh, and it was at the eight week appointment. Okay. Wife wasn't showing at all. You know, and it was just the news, right? The moment that the ultrasound technician put that probe on my wife and I heard the heartbeat, boom, I've never been the same since. I've never been the same since. I changed immediately. I walked out of that room completely changed. I was like, okay, what do you need? What am I going to get for you? What am I going to provide for my family? I did. I was not selfish anymore. Okay. That is the mindset of a man when it, when it comes to kids. And you lose the lover side when you do that, okay? If you're not prepared for it, like like I said, I got comfortable um, and I just embraced the provider role and I forgot to woo my wife. Um, she was the mother of my kids, okay? She's the mother of my child. She's not my lover anymore. And correct me if I'm wrong, this is why the book s- speaks to men and saying, hey, if this happened, it's your fault because Bingo. you're supposed to be leading and you're supposed yep. to be doing what you did before and you stopped. So don't, Quit looking at your woman or your wife and saying, well, she's this way. She's that way. She, you have a choice as to how you're going to respond to any human, including your wife. Bingo. Stay and be that rock. Get yourself centered. Do what needs to be done. And it shouldn't matter one iota what she's doing. And I say the it same thing to, to women, by the way, in the alpha book to wives. Don't worry about him. Just be this feminine creature. And he's going to come at you like moth to a flame. Hey. And they're like, and they're, and they're like deer in headlights, don't they? They like that. What the men? You, know, like you they, mean? They, they, no, women. They don't oh. like hearing that. You know, like no, oh no, they leader. don't. And it's very difficult so that, like, for them to put it into yeah. action. Extremely. I think actually, really quickly, mm-hmm. I think it's a lot easier for men to turn things around. I've come to this conclusion after doing this for years, because I have found they are more open to mm-hmm. owning it, if as long as they know what to do about it. Whereas when a woman hears it, she's I mean, a little more snippy about well, why should I have to do that because of all that conditioning that they've gotten. So mm-hmm. I actually am starting to feel more like men are um, can be more effective if they do their part. Yeah, with the and whole marriage it, overall. It could do. You know, it's funny too because um, I am fifty fifty on that now. I used to think that that too. Um, now that I've been coaching for a while, I've been trying to. <laughs> I've been helping a lot of these guys. Like I said, they just don't have the emotional intelligence to really turn around like I did. Okay, because oh. I. I was, I was that player guy. But are they more receptive? 
Are they receptive enough? They are, but they just don't know is, how to. You, you know, you could give them the path, but they yeah. have to walk it yeah. and they have to yeah. expand on it. And yeah. that's the problem. I, I mean, I'm not in their bedroom, right? Um, so they have to do that stuff. But what yeah. it is, is that uh, really what I was excited about talking to you about was this. What I realize now, the magic, the magic happens when the man has his mission, he becomes independent, he's got his own self-improvement journey. And when the woman does the same thing, and when she embraces that change and she does her own thing, buddy. I mean, it's magic. a slam it's dunk. Magic. So I just to, to have my plug yeah. for a minute there, again, this is the book we're talking about, The Dead Bedroom Fix. And I don't mm -hmm. have a copy. I should have a copy of my book, The Alpha Female's Guide to Men and Marriage. But hopefully a lot of people have known about that. These two together, I mm. absolutely believe can turn your marriage overnight. Oh my goodness. I, 100%. Because our message does not resonate with women. Okay. What we do, what we teach, you know, the toxic masculinity crap that you got out there, you know, it's masculinity. Okay. Being assertive is not being an asshole. Mm -hmm. Okay. Two different things. They're two different things. Yep. Okay. Um, and that's what we teach in our group. Okay. Um, a lot of guys that come into our group, they're passive. They're, you know, you got passive and you've got assertive and you've got asshole. Mm -hmm. That's a spectrum. You mm -hmm. want to be in the middle. Yep. Okay. You want to be in the middle. You want to have a heart, but you need to be assertive. Yep. Um, when it comes to conflict, that's your job as a man. And I'm telling you, like I said, that's when women really start getting pissed off um, with our message because they're like, you know, I'm, I don't need no man, you know? Well, how's your life going? How do you feel right now? Are you happy? You know, um, because if you do, if you, if you do embrace that, like my wife did. Okay. So my wife, she's type A. She's a doc. She's a professional. She is a go-getter, buddy. Uh, you know, she is a very good business partner of mine. And you know what? When I changed, she did her own thing. Okay. She actually started doing her own thing. Buddy, it's just electricity when it happens. Mm -hmm. that, that yin and yang happens. And I'm going to tell you right now, fellas, if you're listening to me, this is, this, is, this is how I put it. Okay. My wife has that gerbil wheel going constantly. Okay. What I provide for her is that stability. We were just talking about it before. And I'm telling you, my wife has said it multiple times. She looks at me. Sometimes she'll just, just out of the blue, she'll just look at me and she says, nothing phases you. I am so, so jealous sexy. of that. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing phases you. Yep. And, and that's where you'll that, get the respect friends, and the admiration because oh, when you're anxiety boy. ridden, it, it, it's not sexy and it freaks her out. Yep. It freaks her out even more. And buddy, when you can provide that stability, that rock for her, like I said, my wife, she's, she, she's very independent. She could definitely live without me. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's fine. I can live without her. That's fine. Mm -hmm. Technically. But we make it, we, we make each other better. We make each other better. We build each other up and it is beautiful. Marriage is not dead. It is not dead. It is just, it's, it's a little misunderstood. Okay. Oh, oh I, that's so great. Marriage is not dead. Just a little misunderstood. I'd say very misunderstood. Um, yeah. And with, there's just no roadmap at all mm -hmm. for people. And we're, you know, really, you know, my, you know, like present company included, like everything I've learned, I've learned the hard way. Um, mm -hmm. and, and if you, if you happen to have had a mom and a dad whose relationship, you know, was synergistic in this way that we're talking about, you, you really hit the jackpot. Um, but if you didn't, you're, 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 you're figuring it out too. And, um, let's all tell each other what we've learned. You know, that's my, yeah, that's my belief. I think this all, I think all of this stuff can be taught. I really do. I, I do you too. know, I know I can teach my guys. The thing is, okay, ladies, okay. Understand me here. The guys that I've talked to, the, when I get super frustrated, uh, and I know Ralph's the same way, um, when I'm coaching guys and they're really working hard, they've lost 40 pounds, they look good, they're back to their dating weight, you know, they're, they're, mm -hmm. they just look good, okay? Mm -hmm. They feel good about themselves. Don't fight it. Don't fight that. Why would you? Who doesn't? <laughs> that's the thing. <laughs> but it happens all the time with my coach guys. Uh, it happens all the time who doesn't want a better husband who who doesn't want a better man to spend their night with okay i'm sorry but that's the truth you know when i get this pushback like, like you know um uh, the body doesn't make a difference you know uh, when you see these interviews like you know six pack or dad bod <laughs> i'm sorry ladies but uh um when you're in shape and you feel good and you, you're very attractive um and, and you're an independent man that's that's a very attractive thing and like i said don't fight it um but a lot of the ladies they just I think it comes. What do they? What are they fighting? The women? What do you mean? They they said they, they don't embrace it. 
they don't embrace the changes and they oh. say like they get nervous and they and they basically say you know um they don't right, they don't embrace the changes in their men or themselves yeah no the, in the but, men oh in they, the men they, 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 they see it as a threat oh yeah they i, I did read about threat. that in the book yeah okay yep. and yeah. it's it, it, it that'll happen to a point but if you can embrace it and then actually build them up it it's it if you if you're gonna break your your man down when he's really trying to change and trying to help you and and make your marriage better when he's really concentrating on that if you if you break him down when it's like that you're gonna emasculate him and it's yeah those changes um, will stop. I want to mention a few more things. They're not from the book. They're they're from me. Um, mm -hmm. Things that I try to get men to think about in terms of their behaviors, not just their appearance. You were talking about their appearance a moment ago. There's mm -hmm. behaviors that almost supersede appearance. We don't really have to get into the details of that. That's just a thought that I had. Sure. Um, for example, if you say yes, when you really mean no, that's mm -hmm. a huge one for, I think a lot of husbands who, again, going back to that wanting to make their wife happy, thinking that saying yes to everything she wants is yep. somehow going to improve your marriage. You are absolutely doing the opposite. Every time you say yes, unless you mean yes, it's okay to say yes, if you mean yes, but if you really mean no, and you're saying something different, that will catch up with you. Cause she can read that. And over time, she knows you're being completely dishonest and just trying to placate her rather than being strong in your own opinions. And I think this gets, this could get hairy. We're not going to get into it today because it really could get hairy when we could talk about finances in a marriage. That's a big, that's mm -hmm. a big one. Seriously, a separate conversation. Let's not go down the road, yeah. but just yeah. in general, the framework of saying one thing when you mean something else, big no, no. Yep. That's the avoiding conflict thing. That's yes, it. that's, that's exactly right. what we're going to talk about that. It's yeah. a, avoiding conflict is a huge problem for a lot of guys, just the passive guys. Okay, sort of guys that they embrace it. Okay, um, and they address it in a in a productive way. Okay, um, having, so let me ask about but, your story with that then, because you mm -hmm. went from you said being assertive to passive to assertive. So what happened there, and why were you afraid of the conflict, and how would you you know I know how you turn things around, but I'm more interested in mm -hmm. what went on during those years when you stopped because I, I was more aloof and I didn't want to be bothered. Okay. So, um, I was, I lost my way. Like I didn't have my mission anymore. You know, I, I quit racing, you know, um, I basically, I lost myself. Okay. I lost my, my, my self-worth, you know, and my, the, the confidence that I always had, I didn't have it. So what happened was, um, I would see her, you know, acting out and she was angry. And instead of saying, Hey babe, come here and give her a big hug big bear hug we would i would i would start john you know and try to fix her problems right um you know i was very logical in things like okay um you're upset about this well do this <laughs> you know um and oh my god that just made it way worse way worse um and now i just listen i take it in because i realize that she's just she's just venting mm -hmm. she's just venting um and she just needs to get it out because that gerbil wheel has been going all day um, and when she gets it out, then I just reach out and I just grab her and, and, just, and we just sway. I just put her head on my shoulder and I just sway. How do you Dave. help men? This is going to sound bad. I don't know. Um, I've always said one of the things I tell women in the book, um, in my book is, you know, try to talk less, you know, less is more, the less you say, yeah. the more mm -hmm. you'll, the less you speak, the more you'll say. And I truly yeah. believe in the power of silence. I, I mean, again, that's a whole nother conversation, but so since men do tend to tune out to all that stuff, how do you, what, how do you tell men, what can they do to welcome all that vomiting for lack of a better word, before they go to hug her without mm -hmm. going, I'm going to go nuts, yep. you know, that's, that's stoicism. So we teach stoicism. Okay. Um, inner balance. Okay. So that's the thing. Like the, the book is all about self-care. Okay. When you feel good about yourself and you, you, You've got your confidence back. You've got your mojo back. You've got your mission. You're, you're providing for your family. You, you're, you're doing all of these things and you feel good about yourself. You, you become titanium and, and Teflon and, and things don't really bother you as much. And you don't take it personally. That's the thing. Like you don't take something that she's, that she's saying as an attack. You just see it as for what it is. And she's just venting. Um, and that's what we teach. So stoicism is a big part of what we do. 
Um, you know, you can be too stoic. You don't want to be stone faced all the time and completely emotionless. Um, but uh, we teach being fun, you know, and diffusing those arguments with laughter. Okay. Mm -hmm. You cannot be upset while you're laughing, mm -mm. period. It cannot be done. Okay. And that's, that's something that, uh, that I can teach to guys to a point, but like I said, the emotional intelligence, some guys just, just don't have that ability yeah. to crack a joke. Okay. Yeah. I've always had that. It's not a problem for me. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but like, just understand that she's just emotional. She's just emotional and it's, it don't take it personally, just take it to a point. If she gets disrespectful, that's different. Okay. That's when you embrace the conflict and say, I don't want to be talked to like that. Yeah. Okay. Um, but just got to, you just got to take it. What do you and say to men who say, this is just, this is, I mean, I'm, I'm envisioning people listening to this, especially single men. <laughs> well, that's one question is how does this, how does all of this relate to single men or does it? That's question one. It does. It okay. does. And then also, what do you do when they say, this is just all too much. This is like, I, I can't do all this. That happens a lot. That happens a lot. Okay. So um, a lot of guys get overwhelmed and of uh, um the Dunning-Kruger effect. Do you know the Dunning-Kruger effect? No. Okay. What it is, is that uh, a lot of guys have a tendency to get very cocky at first when they think a task is pretty easy. Okay. They call that Mount Stupid. Okay. Um, you get very confident and then all of a sudden you realize that you're, this is kind of a big deal and that there's a lot going on. And all of a sudden you go back down, you go down to the Valley of Despair, of despair is what it's called. And your self-confidence goes way down. And that's what you're talking about right there. But like, they, you just feel like it's completely insurmountable. I can't learn all this stuff. It's just crazy stuff. What it takes is time. It takes time to learn this stuff. Okay. Um, the, the, the rule of thumb that we have in our group, when it comes to the nice guy syndrome, you know, Dr. Glover, mm. yeah, I had the nice one. guy syndrome. We, we see a lot of that. Okay. That's, that's probably our, our, our bread and butter. That's basically what the kind of guys that we see the passive guys that uh, are manipulators. Okay. So they get down that, that value of spare. And then they start working on themselves and they start reading the books. They start, you know, doing coaching with me. They, we do meetings, you know, uh, we get together. Uh, we have get togethers where actually we shake hands. You do that over time and all of a sudden your confidence level goes up. And then it's something that you can actually, it's perpetuating. Okay. It's something that you actually are, are that's, that's the way you are now. You're living. That's what we do. That's what we do. So, and I want to hone in on that because, um, we have a special that we're going to talk about for people who are mm -hmm. listening to this. And this is mm -hmm. so important, especially in this space, this YouTube space, that sh which is very heavily male. Um, and you get all walks of life here. And they, you know, men in general just don't have, as we were saying before, a space to go. So that's one of the reasons why I wanted to um, promote DSO. Um but talk a little bit about the fraternity because we're going to have a deal. We're going to talk about a second for those people, if they want to join in on exactly what you're talking about. Okay. Love it. Okay. So the fraternity. So when I had my awakening, uh, I, I, I listened to the book. It wasn't just the book for me. It was, it was everything. I realized I was, I mean, I was not the guy I used to be. And I realized that, and I wanted to be better. Okay. And I did that and I read the book and all of a sudden uh, at the end of the book, he mentions uh, that he's got to, um, that, that Ralph started this, what, what they call the DSO fraternity. Yeah. So it's on the dad starting over website. Um, you'll see it. Um, by the way, my coaching's on there too. You can see where yeah, um, see I'm it. Scott G. Um, but the fraternity is different. So uh, we're based on Facebook right now. So the private Facebook groups, the discussion groups, uh, we do meetings weekly. I just did one yesterday, interviewed a guy that uh, went through a heck of a time with with the, with the divorce um, and he's made himself better and he's super happy now. So that's, that's what I did yesterday, but we do that every week. We have multiple coaches. We have five, six coaches. We're all over the world, uh, Australia, UK, you know, uh, mainly the United States, uh, um, Australia and Canada. Um, and we all talk. Okay. So that's your tribe. Okay. That's what the fraternity is. Okay. What it is, is that uh, there's no other space like it in my life. OK, because if I try to share something that, like this with uh, my friends, they're professionals, um, they're actually in pretty healthy marriages from what I can see there. It's not going to really resonate with my circle of friends. So I don't really have anybody that I can say, hey, you know, um, my wife just had we just had a fight. I'm not sure exactly what to do, what to say. You basically put it out on the group and you get instant responses from men all over the world that are doing the same thing. OK, that's what the fraternity is. And it is an incredible thing 
Um, we've got, there's different discussion groups for uh, men that went through divorce, uh, men in dead bedrooms, you know, just this uh, plan of action. All of and then go things. to the single, go to the single. You said that it has a lot for single men too. Yes, um, we have it for everybody. Okay, so you're talking about uh, uh, men that have, that have gone through divorce. I can talk to singles, not a problem. Um, what I teach with the singles uh, with the lover side is to recognize red flags. Okay, and I know you're really big on that kind of thing. Okay, um, mm -hmm. date around. That's fine. If you want to date multiple women, you know, no skin off my nose. I did that. Okay. Um, but eventually that's going to get old. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, that's where I've got a problem with the red pill guys where they don't, mm -hmm. they're, they're teaching these guys how to, how to date multiple women and be, be, you know, a, attractive dudes. But what, what, what now? To what end? You know, to what, what end? What, to what end? What next? Right. Mm -hmm. Cause eventually that's going to, that, that luster wears off. It just does. I've been there. Um, like I said, to each his own, if that's what you want, fine. Um, but most guys, they want connection too. Okay. Women don't understand that. We want connection too. We want, we want to provide for somebody. We, we want a family. Okay. We want a legacy. Okay. That's what we need women for. We, we can't have babies, <laughs> you know, we can't have babies. So we need the women for that. And so I teach men uh, how to approach women because that's a lost art nowadays. Uh, the, the pickup artist community, I can't stand that crap. Um, it's manipulative and it is wrong. Okay. I don't like that stuff. If you're coming across, you know, I'm saying pickup lines, you know, with a purpose to, to get to know somebody. Great. That's great. You can use those tools. Um, that's another thing I wanted to mention in this, this little, um, uh, this, this podcast that we're doing here. There's so much stuff out there in the internet. There's, there's a huge rabbit hole that you, that you go down. Trust me. I've been there. Um, there's a lot of negativity out there and take the good with the bad. Okay. I'm a scientific, I'm a medical science scientist. Okay. I question everything. Okay. So I always have my BS monitor on. Okay. Always. And sound like my there's husband. A, <laughs> there's a lot of crap out there. There's just, you know, these guys are teaching men not to get married. Okay. I got a problem with that. I do. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I, I do got too. A problem with that. I do too. Okay. I'm, I'm tired of them on my Facebook page. I said, I'm, I'm, I'm you're, if you're just going to slam it, marriage, I'm bye. It's yes. It's not, it, then what are you going to do? You know, in the end, all you have is your people. That's it. Okay. You can have the private jet. You can have the super fancy car. Trust me. I've, I've made a lot of money in my life. Well, it, and go do that if you want to do that. I'm not yeah. that just, just don't come into my space and space yep. and dish and diss what I'm you yep. know, preaching and, and, and convince other people to not get married. I, yeah. Yeah. I, I got a problem with that, man. I'm a Midwesterner. We are a Midwesterner. Yep. I, I would never teach that. It. I would, I've always wanted to be a good dad. I had a good dad. Um, I want to continue that legacy. Okay. Because in the end, that's all you got. Okay? Did the majority no of the guys that you speak with not have good dads? Is that fair to say? Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. That's very common. Um, very troubled upbringings and mm -hmm. lots of times they have a domineering mother and no father. Mm -hmm. um, that's, I see that a lot. Yeah. I see that a lot. Okay. Um, that's, I'd say probably 90% of the guys I talk to. 90%. That's exactly the scenario. Yep. Um, and it's a problem because they, they just don't know what it looks like to be a masculine man. They just don't, they, they just uh, don't. Healthy, they have no idea. Uh, yep. No. Um, so, and anyway. before, sorry, but, and before we get to the, um, the promo here for, for, for the fraternity, I just want to say, you know, for women who are listening to this and, and you might be wondering, well, you don't wonder if you know me, but why I'm giving so much attention to this male space area, because usually you'd hear this really with men talking about it, but I'm trying to get people to understand there's a connection between these two things, which is why I'm saying <clears throat> this book, why it might seem like it's for men. <clears throat> if it was coupled with my book, the alpha females guide. Um, I mean, the sky's the limit, the sky's oh, the yeah. limit on what you could do with your marriage. If he just Magic. focuses on that and she focuses on the other. Um, and so what he's doing this video while I'm speaking to men, while we're speaking to, to men 100% affects women. So even though, so it's for both of you, this conversation, mm -hmm. even though it's so heavily male focused, it's for women too. Yep. That's, that's really important for people to hear. Our organization is not manosphere stuff. It's not red pill no. stuff. Now we, we take lessons from them. Okay. I, red pill knows what they're talking about when it comes to female desire. Absolutely. Hypergamy, all that stuff. Agreed. That exists. Agreed. Okay, that exists. But the marriage thing, we are very pro marriage. Okay. We are very, very pro marriage and we want it to work. Okay. I want it to work. 
I don't want to break up families. I don't, mm -hmm. I don't, I hate seeing that because it perpetuates mm -hmm. exactly what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, exactly. And I couldn't possibly it, promote that. <laughs> we were meant, we were meant to work together. Okay. Mm -hmm. We have the tools. We need women to connect with. We need women to have babies with. Okay. Mm -hmm. Women need us to calm them down. Okay. That's basically it. I'm sorry, ladies, but that's the truth. Okay. Yeah. That gerbil wheel. Okay. Yeah. Uh, can I say this mm -hmm. is a funny story? Okay. Mm -hmm. I'll put it in perspective for you. This is the best way I can do it. Um, I don't know if you've heard of the, no, no, the, the nothing box. Have you heard of this? Yes. It's, oh, a, YouTube, it's a YouTube clip. Yes. It's awesome. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. Men have a nothing box. I love okay. it. Okay. We, we have a nothing box and it's our favorite place to be. Okay. When we're vegging out, we're not doing anything. We're just recharging. Okay. We're not being lazy. I'm, I'm not, I'm a very busy guy and I love just kind of hanging out for about 10, 15 minutes just to recharge. And I go right back at it. That's my nothing box. Okay. Um, now women don't have that. They, they don't have that are constantly going, constantly going. My wife actually asked me this on, our, on my, on my journey. Um, we were brushing our teeth where we had a, uh, our bathroom, we we're sitting next to each other and she was brushing her teeth. I was brushing my teeth and she looks over at me and she goes, what do you think about when you're brushing your teeth? And I was like, you know what? I, left, right, left, right, you know, spit, you know, that's it, right? She was, she looked at me like I had four heads. And she's like, what? I was like, oh, yeah. is that like, possible to yeah. not think? Like, why? Yeah. And she's like, you know, I, and then she said, and, and she said this, she goes, I think about what the kids need to eat, mm -hmm. what they're going to wear, mm -hmm. what they're going to do, how am I going to pick them up? When are we going to put them to bed? Um, homework? all this stuff. And I, and I told her right there, I was like, Oh my God, that sounds it, exhausting. Yes. That, that and, sounds and, exhausting. and what made that so powerful that, and I remember watching that video is because if you really understand that, if you understand it and don't get mm -hmm. mad about it, they can't help it. We, I should yeah. say, we, we can't help it. Then you understand, Oh, maybe my role is as a married mm -hmm. person, as a partner, as a husband, to calm her down because she needs that and just be empathetic toward that, not mad about it because she can't mm -hmm. help it. Yeah. It's so true. And that's another, that's another thing too. I wanted to get at too here because a lot of the manosphere stuff, they talk about, you know, women are like this and they, and they talk it in a negative light, embrace mm -hmm. it. That's just the way it is. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's fine. That's the way women are. That's the way we are. Mm -hmm. Use it to your advantage. Yes. That's what I teach guys. Okay. That's what I teach guys with the lover role. Okay. That's my specialty. I teach, you can be both. Okay. There's, you can be a lover and a provider at the same time. Mm -hmm. And I did it last night, the same thing, that same dinner that we had uh, mm -hmm. with a candlelight, you know, it was just a simple thing. It, all I had turned off the lights, you know, and it was just a romantic thing only for 10 minutes. You know what I did at the end of it? Mm -hmm. I come up to her and I whisper in her ear, I can't wait to get you in bed tonight. Mm -hmm. Okay. I can't wait to get you in the bed. And that's all I said. That's it. What I did when I do that is I get that dribble wheel going and I get sex on her mind. Okay. Three, four hours before the fact. Okay. That's how you do it. That's, that's how you make your, your marriage sexy. That's how you do it. And I do that every day. And, and I love it. I love seeing my wife just get, she gets blushed when I do that kind of stuff. She gets little goosebumps. Um, and that turns me on, I mean, big time. And I feel, I feel more like a man when I do that kind of stuff. And it's just, like I said, we're meant to be, we're meant to work together and in tandem and that's the amen. electricity buddy yep, amen for sure scott oh my gosh okay so we need to wrap this up and we're going to talk about not talk about we're going to mention the promo mm -hmm. that dso is running for um, members of my audience which is awesome of him if you go to dadstartingover.com forward slash venker right i think i'm saying that right and you put the 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 um coupon code venker in you get that's v-e-n-k-e-r one dollar off for the first month of a DSO fraternity membership. Am I saying that right? You did. Um, so what we what we do for men, uh, it's it's discussion groups. It's a ton of meetings. Basically, we do podcasts that are private, uh, that that are not accessible on the the podcast apps. Uh, you know, DSO himself, he's got a podcast out there. If you want to hear my story, uh, it's on there. It's it's listed as Dr. Scott. That's me. And we actually did one with my wife and I both. Mm -hmm. Um, so you can hear a little bit more details about what I've, what I've been through. Okay. Um, but it's an incredible organization. We're just getting started. Um, and uh, I'm very, very excited about the future. And I, I really want to try to get women more involved in what we're doing here because a lot of guys, they, they'll turn their marriage around. It, it's great. But then the wife kind of doesn't really know where to go. 
Okay. Yeah. And that's what I wanted to talk to you about, Suzanne. Yeah. That's, I want to, I want a place to refer women to that yeah. they trust that I trust um, and send out the right messages because it's not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing for your man to be a leader. Okay. That's a good thing. Okay. And a lot of women don't realize that that is actually deep down what they do want. It's, they, they haven't yes. been permi- given permission to say that they want that. They don't even, it's, some of them are aware they want it on a, on one level, but deep down they do know it. Yep. Give up a little control. That's mm-hmm. okay. It's okay to do that. Um, and, but the man has to take it. He has to be able to take it and run with it. And that's the thing. That's what I try to teach, you know, because um, that's what I is, heard the most of with the alpha is, well, what do I do if I'm doing all these things and he's not taking the bait? He's not like getting the message. Yeah. And that's, and ladies, if you're in that situation, refer him to us. And, uh, um, absolutely. Um, <laughs> we have a, our approach is different. We try to, um, with guys like that, sometimes we have to tear them down and rebuild them. Okay. And, uh, that, that actually happens a lot. A lot of guys, they just, they need to hear the hard, hard truth that it's their fault and they need to take accountability for their situation and not mm-hmm. blame their wife for that, for the situation they're in. If, if they're in a dead bedroom, they haven't, they haven't been intimate for six months, buddy, that's your fault. Um, and that's what we teach. And, and the good news is that's okay that it's your fault. That's actually good that it's your fault because it yes. means you have the power to fix it. You don't have to wait around. That's the key. This is the book. That's what we teach. This is the book, The Dead Bedroom Fix. And once again, if you go to dadstartingover.com forward slash Venker and put in the coupon code Venker, you'll get a dollar off for the first month of a DSO fraternity membership, which I highly recommend that any man listening, single or married to this program takes advantage of because it it, it will change your life. I truly believe that. It's amazing. It did me. Awesome. Um, And I'm telling you, my marriage... what I tell a lot of guys here, I'm not bragging. Okay. I'm not bragging. My wife and I, what we have now, I wish, I wish everybody had a little mm. taste of it. Okay. Because this, this world would be different. It would just be different. And it would, and she's a strong-willed woman, but I am the only guy. I am the only person. I know on what this you're going to say. <laughs> I am the only person on this planet that can calm her down. And buddy, that is super sexy. And that is why my marriage is sexy. Okay. I Amen. embrace that mm-hmm. and I play with it and there it's fun. It's fun. It it's is fun. fun. And what, what did this, this concept of marriage being boring come from, right? People buy into that stuff. My marriage is sexy folks. Well, and I'm telling you, because I wish, they, I wish you had it. Yeah. Because it went into the providing mode and then just stopped. Yep. That's why it's boring. That's why it yep. gets boring for a lot of people. And again, everybody's susceptible to it. We all have a story. But when we come out on the other side, we want to share it. And so that's what we're yeah. here for. It's not about shaming anyone. It's about here's the way forward. It really works. So yes, it does. this has been so great, Scott. I so appreciate you coming on. Really super excited. Um, and and um, we'll have to talk again. We will. For sure. We will. Absolutely. Okay. I'm a huge fan. Keep up the good work. This this is God's work. Uh, this really is. And I, I just wish people could feel just a little bit of what my wife and I feel I um, and it's worth the work. It's absolutely, it's a, it is work. I mean, it, it is, is work. It is, but it's so worth it. Make so the time worth for it. it. Yep. I um, mean, you, you, what else is there? I mean, if you have yeah, that, you can, it. you can take, tackle the world. If you don't have that, your world falls apart. Uh, well, if you have a bad marriage, it? you're it's, t- it's, it's, that's it. There's your life. If you have a yeah, good one. That, that's the thing too. Like if you're not working on yourself and you, and you bail out of a situation of a, of a marriage that really could have been salvageable, mm-hmm. you're going to repeat it. It's, it's basically going to yeah, happen so that's, again. If you, yep. if you don't work on yourself, that's what's going to happen for it, women and men. There is no growth without pain and without mm-hmm. effort. So that's the so easy true. road, you'll just stagnate. Yep. I just wrote an article on that very thing right there. We're all here. You're here because you went through pain. I'm here because mm-hmm. I went through pain. And I learned from it and it made me better. Amen. There you go. Thanks, Scott. This is great. You got People it. are going to love it. So excited and hopefully mm-hmm. talk soon. Oh, we will. Thanks, sure. Scott. Yeah, thank Bye. you.